Wow, the grandeur of that music really captures the idea that life is amazing and biology is the study of life and we get to study that amazing quality and the uniqueness that we see in all of the life around us. So the study of life ranges from one cell organisms like bacteria to more complex multicellular organisms. In this picture we can see bacteria, mushrooms, plants, birds, fish, and all of them are representing a living organism. But what does it mean to be alive? So let's take a look at the characteristics of life. The characteristics of life refers to the fact that all living things, aardvarks, flowers, no matter how different from each other they may be, herring mantis, stentor, mushrooms, fish, share a set of common characteristics. This is a listing of those characteristics, similar to something you see in your textbook. Here they are listed by the pictures. Defining life is not really easy. No one characteristic or test can determine whether something is alive. Like you saw in the trailer, fire has characteristics that living organisms share. Clouds do. Water does. But they're not living things. It's the culmination of all of these characteristics that allows us to know whether something is alive or not. This list of characteristics is what unifies life. So let's take a look at each. Living things have order. And order is the idea of whether you're unicellular or multicellular, life is organized into cells. Cells are the smallest unit capable of life. Entire organisms are made up of one single cell, like our amoeba, paramecium, and euglenia, you see at the top of the figure. Or there are multicellular organisms in which there are many cells, many cell types, and each of them are specialized to function in the organism. So just in this human arm, we can see muscle tissue, bone tissue, cartilage, nervous tissue, and all of those tissues are based upon the structure of the cell. Living things reproduce, and reproduction is the ability to produce new organisms of the same kind. Eggs are involved in reproduction. Here are eggs with toads in them the acorn to the oak tree, and then here we see a bacteria actually reproducing. And this type of reproduction is referred to as asexual reproduction. Here's another example in which a single parent reproduces itself. But we typically think of in reproduction is sexual reproduction in which two different parents contribute to genetic information that results in a completely unique organism. It involves the combination of male and female sex cells. Living things are based on a universal genetic code called DNA. Watson and Crick, as we see here in the figure by their model of DNA, received the Nobel Prize for identifying the structure of DNA. But it was this woman, Rosalind Franklin, who didn't get any honors for her work in identifying DNA that actually gave them the data, actually they took it, that determined the structure of DNA. And that's a great story that we'll end up talking about later. All organisms pass their traits in genes and genes are composed of DNA and heredity is the reason why children resemble their parents. Living things grow and develop. Here we see a plant developing from a seed and here a chick from an embryo 
in the egg that we saw in the previous figure. Growth simply means that something gets bigger in size. Development involves a change in the physical form or physiological makeup of the organism. So growth and development are controlled by DNA. Living things obtain and use materials and energy. Plants are autotrophs or self-feeders. These are organisms that make their own food and get energy from that food. So they'll take sunlight and convert or transform that sunlight into energy that the plant can use. While animals are heterotrophs and they feed on other plants or animals to obtain that energy in food. Thus they transform energy to run their metabolic processes. So all living things obtain and use energy they need energy to grow, to develop, and to repair and reproduce. Living things respond to their environment. This is the ability to respond to environmental stimuli in a very quick, relatively quick way. So the plant to the light, our reaction when we touch something hot, and when our alarm goes off in the morning we hit our snooze. So organisms react to all kinds of stimuli light, temperature, odor, sound, gravity, heat, water, and pressure. Living things maintain a stable internal environment in a process called homeostasis. Homeostasis is a balanced or steady state needed for life. Homeostasis is the balance between cells and their environment. In order to maintain homeostasis, organisms will regulate things like body temperature, blood volume, pH balance, and water balance. All of these are regulated to maintain homeostatic balance. Examples are the dog panting, the elephant cooling off, rabbits use their big ears to release heat, and the lizard sunning. All examples of these animals working to regulate body temperature as an example of maintaining homeostasis. Living things evolve or change over time. Evolutionary adaptations occur over many generations as individuals respond to their environment by having the greatest reproductive success. Here are some examples of some unique evolutionary adaptation. The moth mimicking the eyes of the owl, the insect that looks like a leaf, as well as the lizard and the frog in the other three pictures. Okay, did we answer the question? What does it mean to be alive? Let's go over those characteristics of life one more time. So living things have order in the form of cells. They reproduce. They're based on a universal genetic code we call DNA. They grow and develop. They obtain energy and transform it into usable energy. They respond to the environment. They maintain a stable internal environment in a process called homeostasis. They evolve and change over time. Okay, that covers it. I'll see you soon.